how it would be, man To go back to a kid, I wonder how it would feel, man To have Joes and Mo to keep it real, man I reminisce on days when I played Hey guys, Brock and I had a wonderful day today exploring his toy collection. Now hopefully I'll do a YouTube video in the near future of his amazing, amazing complete collection of so many different lines. But he came back um, to my house and we've been, I talked to the kids for a few minutes and Brock's been hard at work setting up the Motu display. Justice Curry, I just wanted to share with you some of the first world problems that I'm dealing with right now. So I'm going to show you a fantastic unboxing video of one of the most unique pieces I have in my entire collection. Yes, it's going to be mind-blowing. But I need to find space for it because it's massive. And the only real estate that I have in my toy room is... Up here. So it's filled right now with some unique, fun G.I. Joe boxes and vintage Star Wars and some NECA statues, Master Universe, prop shop, realistic looking Ninja Turtle mask, cool vehicles from uh, G.I. Joe, and then mask. Um, so yeah, I am trying to figure out where I'm going to put all of these. And that's the hard part because it wants to bleed out into that room or into my house and pretty soon my whole house will be overtaken by toys and I have to have a healthy functioning relationship so I can't do that and my wife will literally murder me so if I end up dead it was either Motu Joe or my wife um, so send those leads to the police wish me luck I'm gonna start moving that stuff and then stay tuned for the best unboxing video that I've done in a long time even though I did this one recently, which was fantastic. I'll put a link above if you haven't seen it yet. All right, stay tuned. Hey guys, Justice Curry here. This is going to be by far the largest parcel package toy that I've ever got delivered to me. I mean, look at this thing. It's massive. You're probably like, what? what is this giant piece of machinery that you have, Justice? No! Look at, I have to back up just to give you full scale. Ah, I am dying to see this item. I'm going to save you in su some suspense and not tell you what it is just yet. Um, I'm under a time crunch. I gotta get back to work here shortly. So I'm gonna pry this thing open because I don't want the weather to rain down destruction on the most epic, awesome, wonderful piece of He-Man. Motu history that's going to be in my collection. So stay tuned. I'll, I'll take some more pictures in a minute of the progress. How do I turn this off? All right, I'm going to do a sequence um, and speed this up and show this crate being dismantled and go.
Behold, thing of beauty, an original Masters of the Universe store display from Child World. I'll fill it with its figures that were in here. Little marquees for each. There's focus. Cobra Khan, Rotan, He-Man, Dragon Walker, the Masters of the Universe, filled with crevices, cracks, and amazingness. I can't believe it's at my house right now. Oh my gosh. Freaking awesome. All right, I'm gonna call my neighbor. Have him come over and help me bring it inside. <laughs> oh gosh, watch your stuff. Because what I'll do is I recorded. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you the inside before I cleaned it all up. Um, still got a little bit more elbow grease, all the dust from the ages piled up. On a very interesting that still had straight slot screws there so that's pretty neat um, I'm gonna take this off right now just getting ready to take it off and I went eh, let's let's hold off and videotape a little bit of it all right I'll come back to you hey guys Justice Curry with you today I want to go over the amazing story of how this piece came into my uh, possession now I'm gonna open some boxes that I haven't opened yet right here to show you um, the contents or the figures that were actually in the store display. And the story is worth mentioning as well. Um, so early November 2018, I started getting some messages um, from various people saying, hey, check out, I know you're into He-Man, check out this thing that's on eBay. Do you think it's legit? And started doing some research. So basically, it's a Masters of the Universe original 1984 retail display, one of a kind, was the listing title for this. Um, I started looking into it, and I'll show you some of the pictures that were listed, if I could make them bigger. It's right here. I'm going, ooh, what's this? And my heart starts pumping because I've never seen it before. Um, like, literally, it's fun seeing something you haven't seen before. And I've seen a number of, you know, one-of-a-kind type store displays come up over the years. But there are, like, vintage videos. I don't think I've ever seen um, one in person or for sale. So this, you know, giant piece of plexiglass, uh, the picture, I'm going, what is this thing? So, basically, I started brainstorming and going, how can I own this? Um, I'm, I'm going to bid on it. I need to bid. But the seller out of lower, uh, let's see, lower centralized Massachusetts said pick up only. And I'm going, oh my God, that's, that's 12 hours away. How am I going to pick this up? I messaged him and go, hey, I, I want to bid on it. But as far as getting time off from work, can you hold it? I'll pay for it right away, but can you hold it for, say, a month until I can scramble and figure out how to get there? He's like, no, I need this thing gone ASAP. I'm going, oh, jeez, old Pete, how can I do it? And I'm reading the, the, the title of it. It says, this display originally graced the action figure aisle at the long close Enfield, E-N-F-I-E-L-D, Connecticut Child World Toy Store. It displays the 1984 line along with a couple of 1983 figures. The item was acquired by a former employee at some point after the store was done with it. Since that time, it was moved to at least once to a basement of a family member, 
and the current owner has decided to sell. So the guy that was selling this on eBay was helping another person out by, by listing it. Um, after some lengthy research to find out the origin of the display, contacted both Mattel and a couple knowledgeable online toy collectors. Um, I was actually able to get in touch with the manager of the display's child world in Enfield. He managed the store from the late 70s until the chain folded in 1980 and reported that the store used third-party contractors to make displays such as these. So it wasn't like Mattel made, you know, 500 of them for various stores throughout the country. It was literally Child World had specific contractors that they gave specifications and said, hey, we need this display, rockiness, boom, boom, boom. And I wish I knew who the actual person was that made it, but it doesn't matter. The fact that it graced the toy aisle for, you know, a year or two with tens of thousands of kids that got to experience that magic of Motu, just like us, it's, it's just a real cool piece of history. Um, so I messaged him, he said he can't hold it, so I'm scratching my, my brain, and he's telling me, oh man, I've had so many messages from people all around the world wanting to buy this, but it's pickup only. I'm going, okay, how can I do this? How can I do this? Well, I put on my Facebook profile, said anybody live in lower central Massachusetts? And I had a couple people um, say, yeah, 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 me, me, me. But one in particular, one of my Facebook friends, John, um, I don't know if he wants me saying his last name, I'll say it anyway. Neuer, N-O-Y-E, and that's definitely not how you pronounce it. <laughs> he said, Hey, I live over there, and I go, well, this is what I got going on. Um, I want to buy this, and he's a toy collector himself, and he's like, oh, absolutely, I, I want to help with this whole process. And coincidentally, he worked in a shipping department, knew how to make custom boxes, like that gigantic, heavy wooden crate. And we worked out a little a few details behind the scene, and I'm like, whatever it takes, man, I just need to get this thing here. Um, and I, I couldn't imagine a more perfect scenario go down with this person that doesn't owe me anything, just wanted to be part of, um, you know, bringing this piece of history to me and helping me out. Um, and, and it was just, it meant so, so, so much. Um, and it, like I said before, it takes a village. It takes a lot of collectors um, saying, hey, let's, let's work together on this. And I love it. I'm having fun with it, I'm restoring it, finding place, first world problems, this massive thing, finding room in my toy room is an undertaking, but I got the perfect place for it, got to figure out uh, some more plexiglass, clean the, the original figures I want to put in there, um, get some LED lights at some point, and it's, it's just a fun, fun hobby. I love this. Thank you so very much for watching this. I'll just keep progressing along and showing you um, what's going on. I did make some contacts and reach out to the, um, after I bought it, um, the guy selling it on eBay and I said, hey, can I get the name of this person? I want to interview the former employee, but most of these people are elderly now considering they're probably in their, you know, 40s uh, and now it's 30 some years ago. So it's hard to get that chain of custody, but that's all right. I, I know it's real, it's magic, it's fun and you are taking part in the journey as I just need to shut up now and be quiet. Justice, just turn the phone off. Turn the camera off. Turn it off now. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you some of the progression of the work that's being done to this store display. Um, as you can see, I took off the, um, the plexiglass. Um, it wasn't that hard. It just had four screws right here, but it's a neat bend in it um definitely gonna have to replace that that's okay um it's been sitting for you know 30 plus years so some i don't know there's like wasp old bugs and stuff like that um you know just the the layer of dust and probably sitting in basements for eons um so what i've been doing is spraying otoban and just doing little sections you know spraying it uh, you work in a soft bristle toothbrush and then putting um, some paper towel over it and then soaking up some of that moisture and, and it's getting some you know gunk off of it as you can see some brown yuckiness on there 
Um, so I'll slowly do a restoration job on this, but it's going to be, you know, one of the most important pieces in my collection. It's uh, just to think of, you know, tens of thousands of children that walked past this and it inspired them to go, oh my gosh, look at mom, dad. You know, it's a selling machine. Obviously, toy stores have these toys in a, a nicely displayed area because they want kids and parents alike go, oh, I need to buy this stuff. But, you know, we don't think about that part. We connect with the nostalgia version of it and just having this piece of history um, and being kind of a curator of a museum, for lack of a better term, um, it's special. It's really neat. It's not for everybody. Some of you might go, oh, it's, it's ridiculous or it's huge or I don't like the look of it. I think it's a piece of art, you know. It, I would love to, to track down this guy that... Um, actually made this but that that's probably the odds of finding that slim to none as you can see some some velcro in there um, like I mentioned or maybe I didn't already it stays with the timepiece you know you look for clues like this um, straight slot screw um, which would have been correct for that time period um, you're looking at the the feel the smell the patina on it that you know it wasn't just manufactured and some enthusiast uh, going, oh, I want to make a He-Man display. Absolutely not. Um, you can definitely tell this is the the right dimensions, the um, little not placards, how it was set up to be moved with the Velcro. Um, I, I totally know this, this is a store display. No question in my mind. Um, but some guys go, I want that paperwork. I want the video document of the person that made it. You can't get that all the time. And especially with some of these pre-production items, these one-of-a-kind uh, pieces of art. You know, I'm lucky enough to have gotten some of the color studies and designs that Ron Rudat um, did for the G.I. Joe in developing low light there. But, and I got a letter from Ron. You can't get that all the time. And some of these pictures or these hard copies, pre-production, you look at them and go, okay, the tooling to make this, this is not just a mass produce, um, something that, that guys are gonna sell little copies of and whatnot. No, this is a one of a kind piece. You have to kind of dig deeper and look at the quality of it. Um, and unfortunately there are scammers out there, people that want to make reproductions of certain weapons or accessories and it makes us cynical um, but that's just something we deal with and I love it I don't care what you think actually I do care comment below what you think so far as I'm I mean I'm gonna make a long video because I'm excited about this and only one person watches it I don't care I'm making it for me I'm making it for my fans I'm making it for people that love he-man um, and you're coming along on this incredible journey. That's why I'm videotaping it. I don't want to just share this by myself and go, ha ha, it's mine. I only get to see it and only my close circle of friends. And I've seen collectors um, that have amazing toy rooms and they don't post any pictures. They won't let me take any pictures. They have one of a kind stuff and there's no pictures of it. I'm like, why? But they have their reasons and each person collects differently. I like to be loud and proud to share my passion with the world and that's uh, that's why you watch me because you like my enthusiasm you like my passion and I like all of you I mean I'm doing it for you guys to come along in this journey that's why I include my kids in here and and someday when I'm old and my kids are watching this it, it's gonna outlive me these videos are gonna outlive me and just having a little piece of me in society floating around on YouTube it's special sharing this little thing is special I don't know I'm ranting on and on but I like talking and hopefully you like listening so stay tuned I literally have a toothbrush and I'm painstakingly cleaning every detail in the home stretch I start with the base started here and then have a method to my madness spreading that photo ban around killing any germs in its path getting rid of any funk. I mean, it didn't have a strong smell, but it had like a, I don't know, just an old type smell. Like a 
maybe a musty-ish basement type smell. But that goes away over time and we'll let it air. Let it breathe and be free! But typically Otoban does the trick. Spread it around my toothbrush. I'll later use tonight. My teeth. And then. So I got some boxes. I want to see what's inside of them. Um, they're pieces for this display piece. Um, I kind of already have an idea because I saw the, the listing. So I kind of know what figures there are, but I'm interested to uh, see condition. And there were some Velcro pieces on here. So I'm wondering if the Velcro is on the feet of them. John Pack, I mean, look, look at this. Just bubble wrap to the max, um, expertly packed. Holy moly, look at this. Dude's got some skills. I suppose that that's his job though, packing things. You're gonna be a tad above the rest when it comes to uh, taking pride in your work. Guessing is oh I'll save this suspense just from the size and the the weight of it alone. Man, did he pack this thing up good? Bubble wrap. Gosh. I say pH. No. Or cut my finger off. One of the two. All right, almost to it. I was right. It's loud. Man, this is clean. How do you undress it? All right. Whoa. Whoa. I mean, you talk about a snake mountain that has never been played with and is minty, fresh. Wow. That sucker is nice. Wow. So cool. So that's gonna go in here. Pristine, pristine. All the darn wrappings over there. One more box. Oh. Package with this sticker on it has accessories in it. Please check everything. Enjoy. <laughs> it wasn't messing around. Definitely not messing around. Still got, you know what I should tape? I'm gonna burn that giant wooden crate. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Videotape it. Yes. Alright, what do we got here? What do we got going on? Wrapping, 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 wrapping paper. Individually wrapped some of these figures. Put fragile on it. What? What? Look at this. Oh, come on. The most mint Visto I have ever seen in my life. Mint. Mint, 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 mint. But again, it's gotta be. If it's never been played with. Whoa. Who's next? Whiplash. And yep, on the bottom is a little circle of um, Velcro. Stand upright. Doop. 
I still have that. Some of the Velcro, I imagine, falls off over time. Alright, I'm not going to watch. You don't have to watch me doing all this. I'll unwrap it and show you the end result. So I'm doing a little workstation here. I'll show you with my brushes and Otoban and soapy water and regular water and all kinds of just cleaning them meticulously and putting them back in. Um, yeah, it's it's been a fun little endeavor. What I found interesting too, because I'm looking at Web Store and I never see him like this with his um, his string all. I mean, half the time he's missing that string set up there for his grappling hook. Um, but I went, you know what? Since these were never played with, I can imagine this was just taken out of the package and kind of put into the display. But luckily I have an example of a carded one, which I'm looking at the, uh, it's hard for you to see it though, but it wraps around exactly the same way that uh, th that string a bunch of times around the backpack. See this, it's very difficult to, to see, but you get the gist. It's exactly the same um, wrapped around, so they literally just took it out of the package, slapped it on there, and, and put it into the display. Um, as far as maker's marks, because some people are probably gonna be like, well, is it Malaysia, is it Taiwan? So, like Fisto here, it's hard to see, but I'll just tell you. Uh, this one says Malaysia. Buzz off is nothing. Here, I'll just turn this around for you. Whoop. Um, let's see, Whiplash is, just says Mattel. And again, my buddy Brock is the one that has all the information as far as knowing the more common ones, uh, like Mexico, Malaysia, Taiwan, and you get the, the rare ones from India and, and other uh, countries, yeah, ta Taiwan. Um, so you're just, uh, just chugging along here. So just wanted to show that interesting little fact with Whiplash. So I'll continue the adventure. Goodbye. All right, I've taken out all the figures and kind of lined them up right here for you to see. Just some interesting little tidbits about it. Um, I was happy of how immaculate they are. I mean, granted, these these have been sitting in that darn display thing for 30 years. You know, bugs got in there, mice made a home inside, so I had a little bit of cleaning to do. Um, but as you can just feast your eyes upon, these were never played with. These are just perfect condition. Then I was scratching my head. I'm going, why in the heck? Let's see if it'll focus here. Do, 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 do. Maybe if I go like this and use the zoom function. Look at man at arm's head. I'm going, why does he have some uh, some problems going on there? Focus, focus, train the focusing on. Oh, man at arms, why don't you focus? All right, never mind. Um, how do I zoom out farther faster? Still learning this new camera, but there's little chunks taken out of there, and I'm going, why is that doing that? Mice were super hungry and uh, took some little chunk out of Man at Arm's head. Must feel good on their teeth or whatever. He Man, that strap naturally breaks from just being so tight over the years and the hard plastic changing. Um, and. As you can see, there's some of the uh, Velcro. This this is two pieces of Velcro right here. It came off of the rock, you know, sticky still a little bit, um, but it just pulled it up off the um, display piece itself. And that one still is the one sided. And then I see a bunch of these like um, little tiny loops around these plastic loops with a screw on it, some type of you know, securing device. Few are on there as well. 
but as you can see the mouse took a chunk out of Buzz Off's nose as well. I don't know if I'm going to put those back in there um, or upgrade and then just put this one aside and just say well this is part of the set and you know if I ever pass it along someday I can at least give the originals that were associated with it. Webster, beautiful condition. I'm just loving, loving looking at them and resonating the history behind it. Orko's little, yeah. Feet, his little feet right there. Clawful. Oh, maybe that's never been opened. You don't know. Um, Dragon Walker, great condition. Even if you look, sure. Oh, do I have, need to have a knife on my person's kitty? What are you doing? Right. Right here. All right. Should be clean as a whistle. It is. I mean, no battery's ever gone in there. Yeah. Clean, clean, clean. Um, but I still have to give them an all an auto ban and. Uh, and soapy shower just to clean off the decades of funk associated with them. Um, some weapons didn't survive and I mean with a big hole in the display case I can see why He-Man's shield probably fell off, his sword fell off, who knows. I'm not too concerned but this is all the figures I got for it. No strap for him but again if you're displaying it why would you put that little ripcord strap there. Oh, you just want to be part of this whole thing, don't you? Yeah, you do. All right. Well, we'll continue the adventure. To get it done before... Uh... Oh, yeah. That's some weight. Oh yeah, you can reach it. That's why you have eight foot tall friends, ladies and gentlemen at home. Oh, tussles. Hey guys, Brock and I had a wonderful day today exploring his toy collection. Now hopefully I'll do a YouTube video in the near future of his amazing, amazing complete collection of so many different lines. But he came back um, to my house and we've been, I talked to the kids for a few minutes and Brock's been hard at work setting up the Motu display. So we, tr um, there's already placards that have, you know, the names of where the figures were um, set up. So we're trying to keep it um, pretty spot on to how the display was originally set up. There's a few different um, things we kind of took liberties of. Brock was just um, show Skeletor was originally set up right there. There's, there was two little tiny, yeah, uh, pieces of round Velcro. And you can see Skeletor's name right up here. So he was originally supposed to sit right there. But we didn't like how he sat in that far off place. Wanted to give him a little more prominent location. Took the Velcro off the back spot under him and put one of these uh, custom stands on there so it'll fit properly because it was a trap door and I think it really pops. Um, so let me kind of go back to give you a nice, oh, as I'm, look at what I'm standing on. Yeah, <laughs> toy collecting dangerous. All right, so I'm trying to get everything in view so you can have a beautiful, I want to even take a picture of that. I 
So, Daddy's. Hey guys, so this was the gigantic crate, and I figured in good fashion, let's have an old uh, fashion, I said fashion twice, Viking funeral. What is a Viking funeral, you ask? Well, you're about to find out. So let's. Hey, Brandy, how are you? Hi. Hi. You this is um, the box that was up there that was oh, gosh. actually almost a uh, like. Yeah. All right. So yes. this is going to be a little bit dangerous. Actually, a lot of bit dangerous. Stand back, Brandy. I want you to go even farther back, okay? Should I bring the camera? No, leave it right there. So I got a stick. Hit like this far? Yep. Hey guys, Justice Curry here. On the phone, all the way from Massachusetts, is my buddy Sean. Now, Sean was involved in the beginning of this adventure. I wanted to get straight from the horse's mouth his involvement, how he became uh, the curator for a moment of this wonderful piece of He-Man history. Sean, thanks for being here with me. Hey, good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, Happy thanks. Talk about it. Awesome, awesome. So thanks for agreeing to kind of tell me your your piece in this puzzle. So let's start, start at the beginning. Uh, just tell me kind of how you uh, came to be in possession of it. Uh, a friend of mine uh, was moving, and he had talked to me about this this, uh, this large He-Man piece he'd had for years. Um, he was given by a relative who, unfortunately, he's no longer in contact with, and it hasn't been for a long time. Um, the He-Man piece was a display piece, possibly from an end cap or whatever, uh, wherever they displayed it, in an old child world in Enfield, Connecticut in the 80s. Nice. Um, so... Yeah, so when I when I got to see it finally, I was actually taken aback because it's it's monstrous as you've seen it. I mean, it's, it's huge. <laughs> I'm looking at it now. Yeah, and um, it's uh, I mean I'm sure that the pictures are up. So uh, it, it's it's mammoth. And my first question was, well, was this an employee of the store doing it? Did Mattel um, issue this to all retailers? What do I have here? Because my my buddy had asked me to sell this on eBay. Yep. So. I, I didn't want to establish a price or put a, uh, you know, a, a minimum bid or anything without knowing exactly what I have. I mean, as a collector, you know that you know it's great to get something from a company, uh, a promotional piece, anything that's used in a store. I mean, uh, I think we, we briefly went back and forth on email. I, yep. I, a few years ago, I was able to sell cardboard displays from a G.I. Joe you know, display at Big Lots, and those things went for more than the figures did. So, oh, I believe you know, it. We collectors... We, we love stuff that's been up in stores and you know it's kind of special so so when i got a hold of this i uh i started doing as much research as i could to find out where exactly this thing came from who made it you know was it just a random employee who had a you know a, a passion for for painting spray foam or, or was this something official right so um my my first call was obviously mattel of course i called them i waited on waited on customer service and when i spoke to uh when I spoke to a customer service rep, um, I said, <laughs> it was a Friday, and I said, you're going to love me. This is the best question you've got all week. And I described <laughs> what I had, and she said, wow, I don't know who to ask about that. And she said, can you hold on a few minutes? And, you know, I, I waited, and she came back and said, well, I talked to our, our longest tenured employee who's been here about 25 years, and he had no idea. Yep. I said, okay, great. So I've got to I've got to figure out, I'm going to do some more digging and see if I can find out, out what this is. Um, obviously no internet searches brought up anything. I can't find any interior shots or couldn't find any interior shots of a child world mm -hmm. in the eighties. I couldn't, it, I came up with nothing. I found one exterior shot of the store, I think in the infield store or one just like it. And that was it. Right. So I thought I was at a dead end. And, um, luckily my, my brother, who is, uh, who is my, my cohort and some collecting, uh, adventures, <laughs> I was talking about was talking about it at work, and of all the chances, one of his coworkers said, "Well, let me ask my father-in-law. He was the manager at that child world in Enfield in the '80s." Oh my gosh! So, yeah, it was, it was pure dumb luck. And um, my brother had him ask about what the origin of this piece, and he said, um, "The store managers were given carte blanche for end caps and for display pieces, and they would contract it out." Yep. 
So there was someone in the 80s in Enfield, Connecticut, or the surrounding area that worked on this piece. And, you know, honestly, uh, I was uh, I was really taken aback. The thing that was really great about this piece is, is the, the intricacy on the airbrushing on that phone. Oh, absolutely. That makes it. I mean, it's, it, it's it, really gorgeous. So, yep. Um, and you, you can. Yeah, so, once. It, another, another thing. Um, that I, I noticed other than the airbrushing because the airbrushing the details make some of the the nooks and crannies really pop on it and I found it was hilarious because I'm looking at the figures and I'm going oh my gosh they're not played with I mean granted some of them had some uh, some conditioning uh, issues because mice got in there over time and probably got hungry and you could see some some bite marks but I don't care about that I had never seen a more mint um, he-Man and Skeletor, and, and there was no playware. I've, I've had thousands of He-Man figures throughout my collecting years, and I've never seen them this mint. Uh, and it was just, it was a pleasure, because you realized, literally, they were given a whole bunch of mint on card figures, whoever the creator of this was back in the 80s, and said, hey, put these in your display. So we ripped them right off the bubble, put those little... Uh, uh, what was that? Some Velcro and some other kind of like tie straps with a nail in it and put them directly from his hand onto that darn uh, display piece with, with no children playing with it, which is very rare as a collector to find these days for a vintage figure. So that brought a smile to my face. Yeah, the um, as far as as far as how the the uh, the piece was handled over the years, my understanding was it went from the the attic to the basement of their house at gotcha. some point over ten years, and and that was it. Um, yeah, it is in good condition. I mean, on the downsides, a plexiglass that plexiglass would have been really really nice to have been intact, but you yeah. know, it looks like it looks like it, it did its job. Whatever whatever it was, uh, whatever it took a hit from protected those figures. <laughs> and obviously, I mean, the the the, uh, the Velcro. Um, so, I mean, as you said, some of it was 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 not holding. Yep. Um, I mean, Velcro last. I mean, the last thirty five years, it's, that's a pretty good run. Oh, absolutely. So um, the uh, I, I don't know if you focused in on the backside. The backside did have some um, the the uh, the plywood or chipboard or whatever it is is kind of pulling out in some places around the screws. Yep. But again, I I, I like display pieces like that. Um, I'm glad that I was able to sell it to someone who obviously loves it and you know wants to share that with the world instead of it sitting in a in an attic or a basement for another 35 years. Gotcha. Um, oh my goodness. So it went from yeah. the employee to your friend, or was there a person from um, in the middle between the employee and your friend? Nope. Employee to friend. The employee uh, the employee was a relative of my friend, and I guess they've had a falling out since, and I haven't talked in years, but that's neither here nor there. And and I know um, we talked about so. it earlier, and because some people are going to go, well, why aren't we talking <sighs> to that friend? Or why aren't we talking to the employee? And you said, I believe the employee is since deceased, or is that an understanding? Or probably elderly at this time. And then, as, yeah. as a lot of people, uh, you know, have privacy things. So we talked... I mean, your friend just didn't want to be involved, didn't want his name being on the internet, um, which is fine. Um, that's that's a common thing that I encounter with people that I go, oh, I, even collectors. I've been in some beyond amazing G.I. Joe collections that have pre-production, first appearance, you know, molded this or art. I'm like, let me take a picture. And they won't let me take pictures. They, they're not, they don't post on any social media because they just, they want to remain private. And I, and I respect that. I get that. So to, probably to answer some of the viewers' questions of like, why, isn't, why aren't you talking to the friend? That's what I'm, my understanding is. The friend just wants to be, be private. And that's, that's cool with me. Exactly. The, uh, the friend that owned the piece uh, does not want really anything to do with social media or the internet, which is, is his business. Yeah. The relative that gave him the piece, again, they've had a falling out and haven't talked, so I don't think that's a smart idea kind nah. of thing, from my point of view. So. Um, and the uh, the manager of the store, that's like a third contact for me. I, I'm i okay. If, if, if that person had said, yeah, this came from Mattel, that would give me some incentive to pursue that, but it's, it's a contractor piece. I'm right. Really, I'm okay with I'm okay with that answer. What am I? What are we going to do? Try and trace that back? I mean, find the contractor. Or the, yeah, that's impossible. Yeah, who, who knows how it was paid for? Was it under the table? There's too many questions with that. But once I got once I got that it was not a Mattel piece, 
and it was not a like a child world chain wide piece and that mm-hmm. this was an original for that store that that manager commissioned that's where my search stopped and i said okay i'm good with that and i put it up on ebay yep um did you get a lot of people message you did you have a lot of people message you um i i did i got maybe i mean yourself and then uh somewhere between five and ten yeah i think people really it, um but but again with the size of that piece <laughs> um, I, my 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 Achilles tendon on uh, on eBay is uh, is shipping. You're At right. Point, I said screw it. I stopped calculating. I just put free shipping on any on any auctions I have. Yeah. Um, I did put I did put pickup only, which you know through your connections you were able to do, and I don't think a lot of other people were. Yeah. Um. So hence yep. you know the lower number of bids, a lot of contacts saying, hey, would you ship this? I'll pay for it. And I'm like, no, because. I understand that you'd have to build a crate around that. You'd have to build a protective crate that could handle that weight. Right. Uh, that's not, I was not doing that. Again, I think, you know, you have the resources to do that. I was not going through that. Yeah. You know, really, when my buddy asked me to sell this, he goes, oh, great, I'll cut you in. I go, no, no just buy me a Pepsi. I'm good. I got my Pepsi. I earned it. But I was not building a crate. <laughs> no, no. So. And I sell all the time, too. I would never consider shipping this thing. It's way, way too big and heavy and cumbersome. It just was a, a miracle, plain and simple a miracle that John, you know, was my Facebook friend that shared a passion for He-Man that lived fairly close and go, you know what? I want to be involved in this and came over to your place and, and picked up the piece. And it so happened that he worked at a facility that shipped out and created custom uh, crates for this i mean it was everything lined up so perfectly and now it's one of the my favorite pieces in my collection is beyond exciting it's just wonderful good that's good to hear considering how much dust there was on it <laughs> oh i oh trust me i spent some hours cleaning I with, with a toothbrush every square inch of that darn thing with a toothbrush oh and, and cleaners I the whole time you were thinking to yourself I got a good price. I got a good oh, price. I got a good price. And, and here, here's the thing. You know, I you, you didn't see, and, this, and I'll probably edit this out later, but you can't see my max bid. And what that was like something I wanted so, so very much. And I was like, I, I'll pay whatever. And I kept switching my max bid all the time. And should I pay more? Should I pay less? And granted, like you just said, the, the local pickup only you know, made the market go down, but it was it was impossible to ship that unless you had the resources. But I have a friend nearby that was the other guy bidding against me. A literally down the road, five, five, seven minutes away from me. He didn't even know, he didn't even know I was bidding on it. He kept it a secret. And it wasn't until after I'm bragging about it. Oh my God, you're, wait till you hear what I, I got. I started explaining to it, he goes, Oh my, I was bidding against you. He said, I was, I was mad for two days after. He was so mad at himself because he was, he goes, I should have raised my max bid. I was planning on driving out there. I go, you got to be kidding me. What are the odds of that? What are the odds? It's craziness. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, maybe, you know, you should let him win. Maybe I would have got two Pepsis out of it. That would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Mm-hmm. That's when I knew I was going to have to have a crate for this thing because I'm like, Jesus, I'm going to need a freaking localizer antenna crate just to get this thing out. And then I, I knew I couldn't guarantee, I knew I couldn't guarantee that everything would be in one piece when I got it to you because right. I'm a professional. And again, that's what led into my, um, that's what led into my decision to stay local with it. So, yep, yep. um, yeah, you know, I will. But, um, <laughs> Well, that's cool, man. Yeah, um, I, I really appreciate you um, taking the time to talk with me and, and just basically filling in the, the puzzle. Um, and, and like I talked to people before recording it and, and just talking about while I was cleaning it, you, all the signs point to this being child world and not a custom. No customizer would have put little placards underneath each figure. The screws in it were straight slot, um, not Phillips head all pointing to the same era. The patina on it was from the early 80s. Uh, it, it, it's it's wonderful. It's it's a great piece of history. And to think of all those little eyes, you know, thousands and thousands of children that look through and go, oh my gosh, look at this He-Man thing, and, and you know, inspired them. Uh, it's just, it's it's a great piece, man. It's, it's really good. And I thank you for working with me and answering my questions before I 
I bid on it and, and going through this journey together with me. And I look forward, and we might be doing part two of a, a, a deal in the near future about a different line. So I look forward to that too. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll continue that conversation. And um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. And, and I, I just want to say at last, uh, I may owe you an apology because I think when you sent me that email saying, uh, asking about shipping, I think you were the fourth person that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was very curt with you, and I said, yep. no, I, I was to the point, I think I typed, are you illiterate, and then erased it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally get that. I don't I don't blame you. <laughs> Four people in a row, could you ship this? No, I put right on there. I think right. I put highlight and bold, no shipping, or, or, or uh, pickup only, or something. Yep, you definitely and, yeah, did. Four people in a row, and then you were number five, or whatever, and, and I was getting ready to lose it. I'm like, no, I gotta make this sale. <laughs> oh, I love it. So, I love it. All, it all worked out, so. Absolutely. Um, well, thanks, Sean. Thanks yeah, for uh, being here with me, and, and I look forward to talking to you again. Great. Uh, thank you, and uh, yeah, it, it was a pleasure, and uh, yeah, I look forward to hopefully our next transaction. Absolutely. And. So, oh, look. oh, look. Look, see how it's leaning just like that. Oh, whoa. Did you see that? Zoom you in so you can see what just Whoa, the fire's so big, you can't even... See how it's like leaning? Daddy, get out of the way. So see how it's like leaning back, like this way? That's because it's ready to fall. So when it falls, I'll zoom you in a little bit. So as you can see, it was in, in like that. So as you can see, the thing is about the fall. So look at that thing. So look at that fire. Oh my goodness, look at it. I'll zoom you back in. So there, it's ready to fall. Well, it, it, it is about the farm. So. Knock that camera over, so help me get it. So. Oh, look at it. It's falling. Getting ready. It's about the fall. About the fall. So let's zoom in and see. Oh, it's going to fall. Let's see. Oh, look at the roof. I'll zoom you in so you can. Oof. Oh, look at the roof and see. Look, look at that roof. It's falling apart. That's what the thing is doing. Zoom you back in so you can see what the thing is doing. Just like that. Well, it's about to fall over. Okay, so we have a box, but it's about the burn. So if we go right here, Daddy, move out of the way they can't see. Please. Please. So I'll zoom you Whoa. in. Whoa. Get that. Yeah. So I'll zoom you in and see what it looks like. Look at that big thing that just fell from the roof. It's about to fall over. 